Talktainment Radio Worldwide Sound. TalkTainmentRadio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or KE World Network, LLC. This is The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, radio the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you, only confuse you, only confuse you. Good morning. And welcome to TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. And you are in touch with the compensatory concept. I am Mr. Bobby. And this is radio the way it should be heard. Yes, the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., who is on the line with us. And as we normally start out today, we start off by asking Mr. Fuller, how are you this morning, Mr. Fuller? I'm still learning. Still learning. Still learning. And quiet as it is, it is kept, and so are we. If you would like to get in contact with the show, you can do that by calling 1-877-932-9766. And Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. would be happy to answer your questions or concerns to explain his position on racism, white supremacy. Now, he's an author of a book, which we will get into a little later. Uh, we want to pick up from last couple of weeks' show. As you know, Mr. Fuller has uh, discussed what he thinks about um, uh, uh, the AIDS and now Ebola. He talked about the Tuskegee experiment. Many of us were not around when that happened, but we were around when the results came out and who was connected with that. But one of the things that we discussed was Ebola and um, about it being possibly a man-made disease and the um, usual suspects who are connected with this. Well, anyway, I myself took it upon myself to do some research on that. I was sent some information, and I researched the information. And um, I'm going to be asking Mr. Fuller a couple of questions, you know, on that. And, of course, you're also able to do that. But one of the things that I discovered, Mr. Uh, Fuller, was that um, there is an actual U.S. patent number for the Ebola uh, virus. As a matter of fact, for those of you who are listening, you can uh, take this number down and uh, and then minimize it and look it up for yourself also. By the way, we always say, and I always say, don't believe anything that I'm saying. And I'm pretty sure that Mr. Fuller Jr. will say that also. Don't believe anything that we're saying, but look it up for yourself. But anyway, here's the number. It's C as in Calvin, A as in uh, Alvin, 274-1523-A1. And when you look it up, you will find out that it this particular Ebo Bond virus was created by, in particular, the inventor was John Jonathan S. Towner. Back in 2007, he applied for the application that was filed on October the 20th of 2009 and published November the 25th, 2010. And then it went on to say, if you look at look that up, you can look it up for yourself. How the government This government was involved uh, with um, or represented by the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. I did look that up. And also the CDC owns a patent on the Ebola virus, and that bothered me. And my question, uh, before we get to your calls, Mr. Fuller, um, if this information is true, and I have researched quite a bit of it, uh, what would be the purpose that that the government via the CDC would have a patent on a virus that uh, that they received in 2010, and now here we are in 2014, 
and now it's a so-called epidemic. Well, I don't know. That okay. would be my answer. As and I would, it, everything, all problems are solved by questions and answers. So the question would be, since you there is a number for it, and then there is a name attached, a name of a person, and that's very important. The name of a person, that person, if that person is still around, should be talked to and mm-hmm. say, did anyone assign you to do this? And if so, whom? And if someone assigned you to do this, for what purpose? And everything has a purpose. If people are working, if people go to work every day in a coal mine or driving a bus or whatever. So, you know, in most jobs, people are kind of told what to, what to do. Sometimes they're told why they're doing it, mm-hmm. and sometimes not. So that would just be the process, the due process, as they call it. Find out what a person is doing, why they're doing it, and what plan that they use to do it, and then if they can find out what was the purpose for doing it. Mm-hmm. And I'm quite sure somebody has some official purpose, and there could, could be some unofficial purpose. And uh, because people are doing things all the time, around the clock, all over the world. So if you're going to search for truth, which you always should be looking for the truth, regardless of where it leads, because that's how all problems are solved. You get the truth first. So that would be the process. That would be the compensatory process, as I would say. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, just just say, oh, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Mm-hmm. And what for what purpose? For what ultimate purpose? Or what temporary purpose? Or whatever the purpose is. It might be several purposes. But what are your purposes for doing this? Okay. And uh, and before we go to the callers, um, and I did look up uh, his his name, and then I found out there were four other people, Stuart T. Nichols, James uh, Comer, Thomas G. Zizak, and Pierre Rollin. And it just really shocked me, and then I, I looked at the whole thing, and then I researched it. There's quite a bit of information that just stunned me that that the CDC had this information, and then here we are in 2014, uh, and now it's a so-called ec- ep- epidemic that supposedly has stemmed from Africa, which makes me very suspect about that. But anyway, uh, you answered my question on that. Let's go to uh, line number one. What is your call? Or what is your question for Mr. Fuller Jr.? Go ahead, caller number one. All right. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to start with a brief uh, comment and phrase that is the background and going right into my question here. Um, you know, it, outside of the Ebola thing, uh, one of the things, one of the big events we have coming up, which we do every year, and in particular every two, four, six years, uh, is a presidential, I mean, excuse me, is an uh, election. And as you are well aware, uh, as we hear every year, every year, or every uh, midterm and every presidential election is the most important election of our lifetime, according to many of our grand civil rights leaders, many of whom are flying in on walkers uh, to tell people uh, why, why, how important voting is and why we should vote. And so I'm probably going to ask the most controversial question, and depending on the answer, maybe the controversial answer based on our orientation due to decades of being inundated with civil rights uh, lingo as if this is all our history and legacy is about, is protest and civil rights. So, to uh, Mr. Fuller, I just want to ask directly, uh, in the system of white supremacies, we know it, we, we, we exist within, uh, is voting a worthwhile endeavor for black people in America? Thank you for your question. Appreciate that. All right. The answer is yes, generally. That would be the general answer. And in some places, uh, the deck is stacked. It doesn't make any difference which person you vote for. Uh, there are some people behind the scenes that are in control of how everything is going to turn out anyway, What, who's going to get what. And that's already been decided before the election. Sometimes people are, are powerful enough in certain localities to buy the entire election. Or sometimes it's all members of the same club. These are the people who hang out together. They all drink and eat together and and uh, go fishing together 
So they're supposed to be opponents, but really that's just a game. And that's all over the world. So you just look at what you can get out of it. Uh, listen to what the campaign addresses are, what the people are saying that they will do for you, because that's all that, that it comes down to. That's what elections are for. What can you do for me? That's the question. You want me to vote for you. That's what you want me to do for you. All right. What are you going to do for me in order to get my vote? And uh, historically, people get a little bit, generally speaking, most people get a little bit sometimes of what they want. And they don't get a lot of the things that they do want. But you do what you can. That's a compensatory process, too. Making up for what's missing. You just do what you can. Ask for what should be given, accept what is granted, and try to compensate for the difference. The difference between what? What you asked for and what you got. And usually you'll get a lot less than what you asked for in any election. That's any people anywhere. In particular, in a system of racism where there's so much deception, so many things that are said that are false, so many promises made that are not kept. I'm quite sure that uh, people who are called Indians will tell you about promises not kept. (laughs) So this is also true of people in a system that's designed to be deceptive anyway. Very few people tell the truth. I mean, it's just kind of taken for granted that a so-called quote-unquote politician, and we're all politicians because we all interact with people. That's what real politics are. But everybody's required to be deceptive in a system that requires deception, and that's the system of white supremacy. Yes, sir. We're, We're not in any other system except the system of white supremacy, and deception is a requirement. In, in any area of activity, economics, education, you got deception there. Entertainment, labor, law, politics for sure, religion, sex, and war. Deceit, deceit, deceit. Fool somebody. Tell them something that's not true. Mr. Fuller, could you repeat those nine areas again for those who do not know or were trying to write that down and could not get that the nine areas of human activity that you have discovered? Uh, nine areas of people pe- 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 activity. People activity, excuse me. Uh, yes, I, I could extend the nine areas into, uh, sometimes people have asked me to do that and include maybe six or seven other areas. But I think that just about covers what most people are engaged in any minute of the day. Yes, sir. Uh, all over the world. They are economics. Economics means use of time and energy. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't refer to money. Economics is how you use your time and energy. Mm -hmm. That's basic economics. Long before anybody even thought about money or or using that as a medium of exchange, I mean, as the expedient way of of, uh, getting things rather than just, you know, trading a horse for a goat. Yes. I mean, you get a lot of things done through calling something, some object, a rock, or leaf, or whatever you want to call money that everybody agrees is money. As a matter of fact, there's a geometric formula for that, so I agree with that. Yes, sir, go ahead. Yes, but uh, time and energy, time plus energy, that's economics. Now, if you use your time and energy in a constructive manner, that's economical. That's what you would say, hey, I I really had some excellent economics today because I used my time and energy and got excellent results Mm -hmm. from my time and energy. When you don't get constructive results, that's non-economical. That's the way I I choose to use the word. Okay. And then education is the process of learning everything that needs to be known. So no person is educated because there are plenty of things that need to be known in order to do what? Solve problems. Basically, that's what we're here for on the planet, Mm -hmm. to solve problems. There are lots of problems that haven't been solved, the race problem being one of the biggest, Mm -hmm. if not the biggest, between people. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mm -hmm. So your educational system should be designed to do that. It's not. 
No educational system nowhere on the planet is designed to do that. And that's why the problem hasn't been solved. Right. All right. That should be a priority. I mean, from the first grade on through whatever grades you got, first thing we're going to do is address this race issue and get that wrapped up out of the way so that we can get all these other things done. That's not what a teacher opens the class with in every classroom, which it should be. I mean, the school board, every school board should say this is the priority because this is the biggest problem on the planet. Okay. All right. So your educational process should always be designed to solve problems. That's what it's for because you have millions of problems. Okay. And you start with the biggest. Okay. That's the third, uh, second Second area of activity. Mm -hmm. Entertainment, that can cover, uh, lots of fields. Yes, sir. We call you, we usually, usually we think of entertainment as song and dance and uh, plays and et cetera on a stage or something mm-hmm. like that. But people entertain themselves sometimes, and some of the best entertainment is when you're working to do something that's constructive. You can call that entertainment. Uh, when I was in the, uh, the military, I had a sergeant who always used to say, when we got, re- got ready to put up a tent or move some boxes, because I was in a supply unit when I was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And he would always start off the day by saying, now, fellas, we're going to have some fun with this. Now, we didn't think it was fun. (laughs) I mean, but that's the label he put on it. He said, hey, you're you're accomplishing things. You're, you're, You're making big money now, I mean, by getting all these things arranged the way that they should be. Everything was in disarray when we started out three hours ago. Now everything is all lined up neatly and whatnot. I mean, now we can take a little break. Okay. But wasn't that fun, fellas? <laughs> well, you know, anytime you're forced to do something that you really don't don't want to do, you'd rather be somewhere sleeping. I mean, we didn't think it was fun, but that was his position. Okay. So that can be entertainment. You can make constructive things entertainment. Basically, he was correct. Mm-hmm. You can do something constructive. And call it entertainment. Okay. And get in the habit of thinking of it as entertainment. But in the system of white supremacy, black people are taught that, hey, if you're having fun, it's got to be non-constructive. Okay. And that's why we do a lot of non-constructive things. Mm -hmm. Okay, the the, uh, the, the last six before we go to the phone calls, uh, what are the labor and what else now? Labor. Mm -hmm. Law. Yes. Politics. Mm Mm-hmm. Religion, sex, and war. Yes, sir. And that just about covers everything that everybody is doing one time or another during the course of a day. You're in one of those areas of activity or another. Okay. Or a combination of many. All righty. You are listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and I'm the co-host, Mr. Bobby. And if you'd like to get in contact with us, you can by calling one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six, and we will get you on the leader here at TalkTimeRadio dot com radio the way it should be heard. Let's go to line number two with your question for Mister Fuller Junior. Hey, yeah, how you guys doing? Good, good. Okay, um, yeah, this is Al from Baltimore. Um, I uh, was talking to a white guy. He's a he's a handyman. And, um, you know, I asked him to do some work on a house that I have on off of Pennsylvania Avenue. And um, he said to me, he said, well, I, I come during the daytime, but I'm not coming at night because a white boy like me don't belong on Pennsylvania Avenue when the sun go down. Now, I, I know you guys may not be familiar with Pennsylvania Avenue, but it's a, a street in Baltimore that, you know, a lot of black people are on and they sell drugs and it's, it's violent. Um, my question for Mr. Fuller is, is it possible for a racist, is it possible for a racist man or racist woman to be racist and not even know it? Thank you for your question. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller Jr. Well, it's possible, but it's not likely because, uh, that's a conscious effort that you have to make. You have, first of all, you have to be able to distinguish one color from another when you look at a person. And then you have to make a judgment about how you're going to interact with that person. And once you do that, in a system of white supremacy, uh, people sometimes use the term conscious and unconscious or non-conscious. You know, uh, people do things consciously. Uh, I don't quite know what that means. But I do know that when you interact with people, 
you make choices about what you're going to say and what you're going to do. Uh, you don't talk to to everybody the same way, uh, though maybe you should. I mean, I always say you should have a code where you, for one thing, you always be courteous to everybody. That's a part of the code. Never let anybody beat you being courteous, regardless of the circumstances, even when people are discourteous to you. And always be in a constructive mode. But now in the system of white supremacy, a white person is required, required by the laws of white supremacy, if you're classified as white, to mistreat and dominate whatever non-white people they happen to be around. That goes with the territory of the system of white supremacy, which makes which what makes it so evil. I mean, you were taught this right from birth. I mean, in all kinds of ways, because that's the only real government of the world that's in place. And it's based on color. Mistreat anybody who you perceive has color in his or her skin. You automatically go into the mistreatment mode. That's somebody you're supposed to mistreat. If you're not mistreating them, you're not doing your job if you're white. I mean, that's what you're taught in all kinds of ways. People don't say it in words outright. No, uh, in this day and time, no uh, a teacher stands in front of a classroom and says that they used to. They used to actually say that, that these colored people, I mean, they're, they're animals, you know, these Negroes. I mean, they're, they are made, they are ordained by God. They are damned by God. I mean, by the Bible says so, that people with color in their skin are just nothing. I mean, and don't, don't give them any regard at all. I mean, they used to actually say that. All right, and that, and they'd also say that that's the decent and godly thing to do if you're going to interact with these animals. I mean, they're animals. Treat them like animals. I mean, you know, uh, but now they don't say that in the refinement stage of white supremacy. White supremacy still exists, but now they say, oh, they are human beings just like you. There's no difference. I mean, you know. Black and white, I mean, it doesn't make any difference what color a person is. I mean, they're all the same and all like that. That's what people say verbally. But then, even a young white a girl or a young white boy, he will notice, well, I don't see the older white people, you know, treating them as equals, you know, right here in my family. I mean, they talk that stuff at the dinner table. That's not what I see that's really happening. I mean, you know, even very small children, by the time they're three or four years old, they're not very dumb. Mm -hmm. They pick up things, right. and they, they learn through osmosis. They learn by example. So by the time the average white person is around 15 years old, they know you're not supposed to treat people of color the same way you treat white people, people who are classified as white. Mm -hmm. They know that. They know that for certain. They're not guessing about it anymore. I mean, they've seen enough examples where that's laid out. And this is what needs to be changed, really. All righty. Um, let's see. Mr. Bobby, question. Uh, Mr. Bobby, could you please repeat that patent number so that we can look this up? Okay. Here's that patent number for e Ebola. And thank you for uh, texting me and, and wanting to know that number. It's C as in Calvin. A as in Apple, two seven four one five two three A one. That C is in Calvin, A is in Apple, two seven four one five two three A and then one. And you look that up and you'll see the inventors of the Ebola virus. And who's all behind it? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's go to caller number one. Go ahead, caller number one. Hey, how you doing, Mr. Um, Still learning. Um, my question to you is, um, when it comes to um, black people, um, do you agree that black people prefer instant gratification or, um, or instant pleasure? rather than um, delaying gratification for 
uh, for reward? For the most part, yes, because we are taught that under the system of white supremacy. First of all, we are taught that what, what you people are going to get out of life, what we call life, is not very much. So you better grab what you can get while you can. And uh, if you make a little bit of money, I mean, you, you spend it right now on whatever. That's traditional. That's almost like a black tradition. Don't save anything. Because tomorrow is not promised. I mean, whatever you're going to do, you better do it in the next 15 minutes. So we have a tendency to do that. I mean, and that was taught from the days of slavery. You don't plan anything for the future because you people are not worthy of a future. That's what was taught every slave. I mean, uh, so that's kind of ingrained in black people even today. So we we want that's why we use drugs and whatnot. We want everything. We want to be happy right this minute, right now, because there's so much going on around us. I mean, there is so much unhappiness that happened yesterday. That's happening right this minute. So don't plan anything. Don't try to figure out anything. Just stay drunk. Stay high. I mean, get some artificial substance that you can put into your arm where you can have illusions that you are somewhere floating on a cloud and all is well with the world. And just keep that up until you, if you die, I mean, at age 21 or age 16 or whatnot, so be it. Because the world is an evil place anyway, and life is not worth living. So what you do is just try to grab whatever happiness you can get. And it doesn't make any difference who gets hurt, just as long as you can be happy for the next 15 minutes. That's been ingrained in the minds of black people by the white supremacists because they have set it up that way. I mean, it's like in Godfather 1. I sometimes use that, and sometimes people say I overdo it. But uh, at least people can understand what I'm saying. If you look at the movie Godfather 1, because there's a lot of lessons in movies, and there's this conference where the Don Corleone, is talking to the other people about whether or not they should go into the drug business or not. They get away from the gambling because it's not paying very much and all like that. I mean, uh, the Las Vegas and Atlantic City thing is not bringing in too much money, not for all the people who need money. So we might get into the drug business. And so that's what they were talking about. And one person stood up and said, well... I've always paid my people more money to keep them out of that type of thing because, like Don Corleone said, uh, it will back up and hurt our own people. They said, well, that's a risk we're going to have to take. But for the most part, we will sell it to the coloreds. We will give it to them. They are animals anyway. Let them lose their souls. Now, that movie was made in 1972, a fictional movie. By 1984, that was real. Crack cocaine was everywhere. So sometimes movies predict what's going to happen. I remember looking at old movies about going to the moon, Flash Garden and Buck Rogers. That was just a dream. That was just an idea. That was a fantasy. That was absolutely absurd. Who's going to the moon? How are you going to get to the moon? If you go there, you're certainly not going to get back. Well, somebody decided, hey, you know what? Flash Garden did it. Buck Rogers did it. And it's all made up because no one has ever done it. <laughs> but let's, let's really get serious about doing it. All righty. TalkTamedRadio.com. Check us out on, the, on WCRS FM 98.3, Wednesdays and Sunday evenings. Blogs and podcasts are available. Download TalkTamedRadio.com app to your cell or tablet. We go where you go, radio, the way it should be heard. Stay right there. We're going to get more callers and more information about the Ebola and that and more coming up next. TalkTainmentRadio.com is the premier Internet radio platform offering 40-plus talk radio-style programs professionally produced, optimized for online distribution, featuring Columbus, Ohio, on-air personalities. 
TalkTimeAtRadio.com offers listeners diverse programming options covering topics such as arts and culture, love, life, and relationships, technology, religion, paranormal activities, local and national politics, women's issues, alongside health and wellness. Listeners can access their favorite TalkTimeAtRadio.com programs free of cost through the website. Download the TTR app to your cell phone and you can take us wherever you go. We have programs on demand to fit your schedule through our podcast. The address is TalkTainmentRadio.com. Hi, I'm Judge Rita McNeil Danish. I'm asking for your vote to keep my seat as a judge on the Domestic Juvenile Division of the Franklin County Court of Common Pleas. Whether you vote early, absentee, or on November 4th, remember, vote Judge Rita because your vote counts. We can give you a new heart. We can help you walk again. We can perform brain surgery. We can treat a sore throat. We can bring life into the world. We can work so many miracles. But the one thing we cannot do is read your mind. When you communicate with your doctor. When you ask us more questions. You reduce your risk of suffering a medical mistake. Tens of thousands of lives are lost every year due to medical mistakes. The healthcare community is working on it. But you can help. Please, open up. Ask more questions. What are the side effects? When should I expect my test results? Will this medication interact with my other prescriptions? We can't answer if you don't ask. Help reduce your risk. Questions are the answer. Learn the 10 questions you must ask. Visit www.ahrq.gov. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, and the Ad Council. Have you been diagnosed with prostate cancer? You may be eligible to participate in a clinical research study for an investigational procedure called high-intensity focused ultrasound, or HIFU. This is a minimally invasive procedure. It is radiation-free, may destroy prostate cancer cells, and potentially has few side effects. This investigational procedure is performed at no cost to the patient. Call today at 1-866-619-6026 or visit www. The prostate cancer study.com. Have you been diagnosed with prostate cancer? You may be eligible to participate in a clinical research study for an investigational procedure called high intensity focused ultrasound or HIFU. Call today at 1 866 619 6026 or visit www.theprostatecancerstudy.com. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him opening his own clothing store at the age of 18? One in 138,000. Excited to be a part of pop culture, he packed for the big city. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. I encourage you to learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks, the Ad Council, and TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Goodwill is a global social services enterprise and the leading nonprofit provider of job training programs and career services in the United States and Canada. To pay for its program, Goodwill sells donated clothes and other household items in more than 2,700 stores and online at shopgoodwill.com. Goodwill uses the revenue earned from these sales to fund job training, employment placement services, and other community programs. The goal of the campaign is to increase goods donations to Goodwill, inspire an emotional connection to the Goodwill brand, and to elevate preference for Goodwill. Will. Supporting minority education. I'm Sean Booker, damn it, from The Melting Pot. I'm here to tell you that as the mother of a high school senior, I know due to financial circumstances, many of America's deserving minority students do not have access to a college education. Since 1944, the United Negro College Fund has sought to provide one. Since 1972, the beginning of this campaign, UNCF has helped more than 300,000 talented students earn a college degree. I'm Sean Booker, damn it. Give a helping hand. Hey, wake up. You can't dream your way into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Steps that go beyond just getting good grades. 
So if you're serious about college, visit knowhowtogo.org today. Brought to you by the American Council on Education, Lumina Foundation for Education, and the Ad Council. The United Independent Compensatory Code System concept by Neely Fuller is considered as one of the substantial and basic books for understanding and effectively countering racism. Neely Fuller will turn upside down everything you've heard and everything you think you know about racism and how it works. Call area code 202-484-5461. 202-484-5461. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. You got the power. All righty. Welcome back to a, to the second, to a second slice of the action. Talk to him at radio.com, the world's greatest radio, and that's radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, and you are listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, exclusively on TalkTamitRadio.com, radio the way it should be heard. Uh, our phone lines are jammed, so we do thank you, and we are going to get to them momentarily here. But before we do that, very quickly, we're going to get the uh, the name of the publication that Mr. Fuller has written, and also we're going to have him give you the information how you can get his book. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller. It's the United, the title of the book, basic title, is the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. But that doesn't mean anything to anyone until they read the book, and then those words are explained in the book. Because each one of those words is very important. Uh, the key term there is compensatory. That's what it is. This book is made to compensate for things that are missing. And what is missing, the major thing, is a thing called justice. So I'm trying to compensate for things that haven't been said about how to produce that product called justice. In fact, you can get the book by going to the computer and punching in ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com. But there's a subtitle for the book, too, that's more explanatory. And that's a textbook, workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of white supremacy. That's on the cover of the book, too, along with the basic uh, title of the book. A textbook workbook for thinking, for speaking, and for acting addressed to the individual person, because each person is an individual person, unless you're co-joined, I mean, from <laughs> birth, with, with another person. But it's addressed to how the individual person can function in a racist society in all areas of activity, there are suggestions in here for what to do and what not to do, because everything is about doing and not doing, saying and not saying. So it's for thinking, speaking, and acting for the victims of racism in all of the areas of activity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, what to say and what not to say, what to do what not to do. And you can get it by going to producejustice.com, and then there's information there about how to order okay. the basic book and the additional word guide. All righty. So if you, uh, uh, we are, if, we, if you are a person of color, whether you realize it or not, you are and have been and still are a victim of, of racism. Okay, let's go to line number two. Go ahead. What is your question for Mr. Fuller Jr. tonight? Go ahead, line number two. Number two. Once. All right, let's go to line number three. Number three. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Good morning. Dr. Fuller. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to share the results of a short counter racist ethnography study that I did with you gentlemen and all the listeners out there. So according to counter-racist logic, we should always follow the logic and the evidence. So a few weeks ago, I heard a recorded discussion between Dr. Fuller and Dr. Wilson, in which Dr. Fuller recognized the distinction 
and personal advertisements, you know, like people searching for men and women between whites and non-whites. So I recently posted a book description of a counter-racist public, publication, the, the interracial con game on Craigslist's personal section out here in Los Angeles. The reason I decided to post this is because the majority of so-called black and mixed women advertisements that I've seen requested white men only for dating or they said their race didn't matter. So I posted this description in the men, so men and women can both see it. So through email, I received three positive responses, two neutral responses, and 20 negative responses. Mm -hmm. The three positive responses revolved around people being thankful that they weren't the only people to see the deception of the white supremacists. The two neutral responses were sent around the basic question, what's wrong with interracial dating? And the 20 negative responses were extremely telling of the nature of white supremacy and its effects on people from all so-called racial backgrounds. Okay, so your question for Mr. Fuller would be what? Well, I just want to say at the end of it, just what the 20 negative responses were. They revolved around that I was a racist. They said that I'm mentally ill. People like me are the reason there's so much racism. There would be less racism if all people slept together, that I'm dangerous, I'm no better than the KKK, I'm scared that there will be no more pure bullet black people in the future, and that white women were comparing rape, uh, white supremacy mm -hmm. to feminist struggles, and a white woman that says she dated black men all her life told me to go to effing Africa if you have a problem with other races, you idiot. Okay. These responses came from both black and white people, mm -hmm. as far as the internet goes. Okay. So all I did to provoke this hate was to promote black relationships and expose the white supremacists. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, God bless you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Did you want to comment for that, uh, Mr. Fuller, or we can go to line number one? Well, I think he, he explained what he had done in yes. the survey he had taken, so I think that's self-explanatory. Okay. All righty. Caller number one, go ahead. You're with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, I know the last few weeks we've been talking about media and uh, sexual confusion. I just wanted to know if Mr. Neely Fuller has um, heard about uh, hip-hop stars and uh, rap stars wearing dresses and uh, even black actors. Wait a minute, did you say wearing dresses and so forth? Right. Okay. Well, wh well what it is is uh, first it started off with the pants sagging, but now they're saying it's long shirts, but it, it, it's really... It's past the knee, and it really, and now they're wearing leather skirts over mm -hmm. the knee. So I you're speaking about the e e emasculation of the black man, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So what is your question for Doctor? I mean, for Mister Fuller? Yeah, I just want to know what's his take on that. Okay. Uh, All righty. Okay. Good question, Mister Fuller. Well, I'm not aware of that particular thing, but I do know what the white supremacists intend to do in a theory of activity. But they they have a massive worldwide movement that is working very well now to degenderize non-white people. That's the term that I give to it. I made up that term, <laughs> degenderization. In other words, so that non-white people don't really have a gender, and particularly by turning the black male into a female or and or into just something. A thing. I mean, you know, where you don't know, is it a he? Is it a she? Is it a it? You know, what What is that? See what I mean? And then doing the same thing with females. See, the, but the whole object is not just about sex or de-sex or, or whatever you want to call sex or non-sex. The object is what it always is with the white supremacists when they take over something or when they in, intend to refine the system of white supremacy, and that is to cause more confusion. They don't care what they use to cause confusion, as long as it enhances more confusion, that people's minds wind up less focused on anything in particular. And whatever they can do to do that in any area of activity, whether it's economics, whether it's labor, whether it's politics, whether it's religion, which is what they use all over the world, all the time, and whether it's sex. And sex is very powerful. So the white supremacists say, well, let's just, let's just get in charge of everything that they do sexually, because that's real key. 
sex is a powerful force. People always have sexual inclinations. But what we want to do when the non-white people are concerned, we want to control it, all right? Uh, and just like we control everything that they do in all areas of activity, but we definitely want to control that. And the best control that we will have, if we, we can confuse them, the more we can confuse them, the better, because then that gives us better control over their entire destiny forever. And con- when we can confuse people sexually, we don't have to worry about confusing them in any other, in everything else. Well, you got that right. Right. <laughs> See, so, you know, right. So when people are just walking around, they don't know what they are th- th- today and, mm. and got no idea what they're going to be in the next 15 minutes mm. Mm-hmm. from a sexual viewpoint. Boy, do we really have them. <laughs> and they have engineered that very well. Yes, they have. And, and, and black people not knowing what's going on, basically, mm. worldwide, they're blindsiding people in the Congo and everywhere else just simply by saying, hey, you know, uh, sex can be anything. You know, it's not anything specific. I mean, you everybody's all fired up about this sexual thing, been that way for thousands of years. Let's just say that sex can be anything. Let's look at that. I mean, let's try that on. I mean, you know, let's not be so old-fashioned in our ideas. And so uh, and so somebody says, well, you know, any, sex can be anything, anything like what? You know, just anything. You name it. Call it sex, you know. Wow. And, and then do it. And then whatever it is mm-hmm. see what i mean yes sir. and then they then they they go behind the bush and wink at each other and said boy do they fall for stuff <laughs> all you got to do is just keep stuff you just say anything and just keep saying it they'll believe it they'll go along with it. these people can't think wow you are listening to the compensatory concept with mr neely fuller jr I'm the co-host, Mr. Bobby, and you're listening to it on TalkTeamAtRadio.com. That's radio the way it should be heard, and we do thank you for listening. Uh, we will give you the number for that patent number again before we get off the show, and we'll also promote Mr. Fuller's book again. But before we do all that, let's go to line number two. Go ahead, number uh, line number two, with your uh, uh, question for Mr. Fuller. Yes, thank you for taking my call. And thank you for providing that information on the patent number. That's really good research. Um, my question, I have one question and one comment, observation. question is, um, the patent that you uh, researched, did it delineate clearly that it was race-specific? I know one is not supposed to believe everything on the Internet and to employ critical thinking. However, I did see a YouTube that talked about South African scientists developing cofficillin diseases. Kaffir meaning um, it's the N word in Afrikaans um, for blacks, and that there were diseases biomedically engineered or bioengineered to attack the DNA mm-hmm. of black people. Yeah. And oh. so I'm not sure if this patent is the same or if it's different in that it um, has created um, uh, Ebola, mm-hmm. but a race specific. DNA attacking disease so that it attacks blacks. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, since you ask me, but I'm going to let uh, Mr. Fuller answer the question. I, I'm the one that did the research on this, and I did uh, speak with uh, Mr. Fuller, you know, concerning this. Uh, he has not, uh, according to our conversation, has not looked at the patent number, so he could not. I understand. Okay. When I looked at that, Uh, and there's a lot of information on there. Um, I cannot say conclusively that it is a race-specific disease uh, or targeted toward uh, 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 black people, but I can follow some logic that I have discussed with Mr. Fuller, and I can see a pattern of the usual suspects that are surrounding the uh, invention of this disease. And as uh, Mr. Fuller has talked about before, when you look at the history of the racist uh, white supremacist, there is a definite pattern that is there. And you can see that most of the time or generally, these are the suspects that are involved in activities 
uh, such as that. But again, I did the research, and he he did not, according to our conversation. And I'll let Mr. Fuller uh, take over to answer the last part of your question. Yes, what was that last part? Um, actually, that was geared towards Mr. Bobby, as he did provide the patent number. Um, my um, my observation. I had a question, and I had an observation, and that is. Um, I have an acquaintance that works in a hospital. And so as it is flu season, some people are very worried and don't know if they have intravirus 68 or if they have the flu or if they have Ebola. And so there is a protocol being started in health institutions to probe and ask specific questions to zero in on what those symptoms are or what the diseases are. There seems to be a panic or a real concern amongst people who self-identify as white. So the questions are specific as to have you traveled. One question, among many, is specific as to have you recently traveled to or from Africa. And the answer is normally no. However, my neighbor is black. And so it seems to me, and the observation is, the media is saying that if you go to or from Africa, you should be screened so that you can protect the general population. Mm-hmm. However, it seems that subliminally people are transliterating the word Africa and saying black okay, and thinking that they're running into black people who could have the disease and give them license to express the racist views that they have anyway. That's okay. my observation. And thank you for taking okay. my call. Okay, Mr. Fuller? Yes, if I understood the question, uh, anything that the white supremacists do is to give strength to the white, to to the system of white supremacy. So if it's any kind of disease that is moving around, or if it's something that the white supremacists had nothing to do with, I mean, it's actually a disease that just showed up. Diseases do show up. I mean, in the universe, among people, among creatures, among animals and whatnot, among plants. And so, but the white supremacists immediately will start studying the disease so that they can get control of it, because, you know, disease is disease. Anybody can get it. And then they immediately, unfortunately, knowing how they think, and the evidence shows how they think, they immediately start thinking of, now, how can we use this to further mistreat and dominate the non-white people of this planet? That's sad. But that's the way they think, unfortunately. Everything, not some things, everything that comes down the pike, the way their minds work, is, look, this is something new. We don't know anything about it. And so let's latch on to it and study it and see what it can be used for. And then immediately they look at each other and say, now how can we use this to do greater harm? to non-white people and laugh about it. Because that's what we are about. That's why we exist. This is what we thrive on. This is what makes us get up in the morning. You have to know how evil the mind of a racist is. This is the way they think all the time. Not sometime, all the time. They don't have any ambition other than that. In fact, if it's not about racism, they lose all ambition. They start drinking and using drugs themselves once they get away from the racial thing because they don't know what to do with themselves. And they've been doing it for generations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, so in a broad sense, without looking at the details, any time the white supremacists have anything to do with anything, always say, if you have color in your skin, always say, look out because they're going to come at us some kind of way and figure out some kind of way to use it against us, because that's what their record shows. All righty. Again, for those who want to know the patent number of the invented, uh, this particular strain of the Ebola virus, it is C as in Calvin, A as in Alice, 274-1523, A as in Alice, and the numeral 1. CA 274-1523-A1. Look it up. Don't believe anything that I that I say. Don't believe it. Look it up for yourself and draw 
your mm-hmm. own con- conclusions, do your research, and uh, then you come up with what you think is going on. You'll see a lot of information there, and maybe you can even address the last caller's uh, uh, question. Very quickly, uh, Mr. Fuller, before we go, because we do have another caller on the line, and I want to get to that caller, uh, just give the title of your, your, your book and the subtitle and the workbook and also how we can get it before we get to our next caller. Okay, textbook workbook for thought, speech, and our action for victims of racism. Of course, uh, we just call it the code sometimes mm-hmm. because a code is just a way of getting things done. It's not secret. I mean, it's open and whatnot. And uh, you can go to the computer, produce justice. Dot com. All right. That's what you punch up. Okay. ProduceJustice.com. Okay. Let's go to line number one. Go ahead, caller. What's your call for Mr. Fuller? Okay, here's my uh, question for Mr. Fuller. In uh, 1963, we had a fellow throw a bomb through a uh, church in, I guess, Alabama, whatever. He threw that bomb in the basement of the church, and four, four young girls were killed. Now, here's the question to Mr. Fuller. That happened in 1963. Here we are in 2014, and black people still believe that the guy who created this whole universe is in this building that we call a church, which is on every half a block in the community. I mean, what's your, you know, perception of that? Like, as, like, as I said, you know, the, the fellow threw that bomb through the inside the building. And in 30, 40 years later, we still believe that the creator of the universe is in that building. Well, uh, the white supremacists have the strongest religion in the world. It's called the religion of white supremacy. Sometimes uh, black people become confused, and they'll say Christianity is uh, uh, the white supremacist religion. That's because the white supremacists wear crosses sometimes, and they burn crosses, or they call them lightning crosses, <laughs> yes. so they give that impression. The system of white supremacy has nothing to do with Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Judaism. See, this is all confusion that the white supremacists do. They will embrace or, or propose or preach about any religion including religions you never even heard of. They'll call themselves Jehovah Witnesses or whatnot. They'll call themselves Zen Buddhists. They'll call themselves anything. Because why? They are masters of deception. But what they believe in and what they actually uh, practice is the religion of white supremacy. Put that in capital letters. That's that's the code uh, analysis of it. That's the name of their religion. They don't have a religion other than that. But they pretend that they have any kind of religion that they get you to believe that they believe in. They don't believe in anything except white supremacy. You can't be a white supremacist and believe in any other kind of religion other than white supremacy. That's why it's called white supremacy. It's a supreme religion. It's a supreme politics. It's a supreme way of uh, econ- so-called economic system and educational system and sexual system. I mean, they took over all of the areas of activity of the non-white people. But they'll have you going to this place and going to that place and whatnot. And But they'll say, hey, I don't care where you go. I dominate everything you do. If you're a black person and you have a church, you don't really have a church. You come unto me. You think you have a church. I can, I can, I gave you your church, and I can burn it down any time I get ready. Or I can just simply tell you, you're not building no more churches, and you will obey me because I'm your God. You don't have another one. And every now and then, I have to remind you, people, you dark-skinned people, talking about you are Buddhists and you are Muslims and you are this. Oh yes, but I'm the person. My religion trumps every one of your religions, including all of you that think you can come up with a new religion. Why? Because I got control of you if you have color in your skin. Wow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fuller, and thank you, callers, for listening. This is TalkTamedRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, radio the way it should be heard. We hope we got some information out to you, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, Mr. Fuller, and thank you, callers. Thank you. Got
the power, the world's greatest radio, talktainmentradio.com.